Oh my gosh, she's doing great. Look at this. What do you think, babe? You're hired. I'm trying. <laughs> she's giving up. You tapping out? Yeah. Tapping out. Welcome back to the Rika Motors YouTube channel. Today we're going to be tearing down the Festiva, getting it gutted, and ready to start fabricating. I even put my wife to work. How do you feel? You ready? What do you think, Rod? You ready to get work? Yep. All right. All good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for my new shop crane, my man. Harbor Freight, new engine hoist. Let's get started. All right, we're gonna start with the uh, interior. Let's, in, let's tear this thing apart. We watch this. Sitting outside for about five years. Oh my God. I think I had the windows down. Look at that nasty headline. I tell if he was a smoker or if it was just left at the Amazon for a while. You can just start it again. This thing stinks so bad. Alright, we gotta get these screws out. You know if the comments in the comments if I'm the only uh, YouTuber that doesn't wear gloves. What are you, what are you thinking so far? Do you like it? Yeah. All right, you ready to tear out this carpet? Yeah. off, get the rear tail lights off, and they'll start stripping the front and pull the engine out of the front too.
All right, we got the uh, bumpers off, we got the grill off, we got the headlights out, all the lights are out actually. Uh, let's go ahead and get this hood off and we can start pulling out the engine. I'm pretty exhausted. Um, yeah, I'm wiped. Uh, today, got everything unbolted up from the engine compartment. Everything's clear. Got the tra transmission disconnected, the shift linkage, all the hoses, vacuum lines, all the fluid lines, the heater hoses are cut, and we're ready to pull this engine out. I just have to disconnect the one, two, and three motor mounts. If you can see that back there, it's kind of hard to see it. Yeah, three motor mounts and I should be able to yank this thing out. Uh, I keep going back and forth whether or not to do the show motor or a Hayabusa engine in the back. The Hayabusa engine would be much, much, much more doable. I feel like I could do that in a reasonable timeline, whereas the show engine would be awesome, but there's so many complications when it comes to putting that motor in. Especially if I'm putting it in the back, I have to keep the gauge cluster up front and just extending the wires on the gauge cluster and all the controls, the key switch, the uh, PATS control for the key module, all that stuff from the Taurus into this, man, it would be a lot. So I don't know, stay tuned. I'm going to decide here shortly whether or not to go Hayabusa engine or Taurus show engine. So stay tuned. That wraps up today. I'll get back at this tomorrow. Third time's a charm. Yeah, I'll take the whole boot off, but whatever. I just left the inner axle inside the transmission. Success. Let's creep under this car and get this exhaust off. If we can't get this hanger off. When in doubt, use a knife. Trying to do this stuff one-handed is not the best. There we go. Pull the exhaust off. Okay, now we gotta get the rear hangers out. Let's come back here and see if we can get these rear hangers off. Oh, 
Oh, come on, baby. Oh, you mother. There we go. All right, that one's off. Now we got to get this stupid motorcycle. Motorcycle muffler off. Put one more in the middle. Probably just pop that off like this. Gotta get this exhaust out. Looks like there's a couple more hangers in the back. Let's get those. Let's come on to the back here. Look at this thing, FMF muffler, huh? It knew it wanted to be a motorcycle. It's a sign, guys. I think I should go Hayabusa engine? Or maybe a Jixer engine? I don't know. All right, let's just yank this thing. You ready? One, two, three. Looks like we're gonna have to unbolt it. Stay tuned. All right, let's get this uh, muffler off of here. So then we can yank this exhaust out. We just have to undo the motor mounts. And we can yank this engine out. Drain the transmission. That way it doesn't dump all over me when I'm yanking this engine out. Just on my gloves. Jesus Christ. That fluid actually doesn't look too bad. Surprising. All right, let's uh, drain the engine oil. That way it doesn't get all over me while I'm pulling the engine. Ugh, my concern is this is gonna go everywhere. Let me see if I can do this without making a huge mess. What do you think? It's gonna drain everywhere. Huge mess. Don't you love it when the uh, jack stand gets in the way? And you just get, oh yeah, the cleanest oil you've ever seen, just all over your driveway. Wonderful. All right, let me clean this up. You ever want, you ever want to clean up oil? Goof off. It's like degreaser only better. Look at that. No oil stain. It's like magic. Yo, so. Am I the only one, but, I mean, look how nasty that shit is. But is, am I the only one that thinks, like, if you buy a car that was driven by someone else, the old oil is, like, much dirtier than if you drove all the miles? I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, as if other people's oil from their car is more disgusting. But if you use the car and you change the oil... And you had fresh oil and you drove the, you know, whatever, three, five, seven, ten thousand miles on that oil change. It's not nearly as disgusting. I don't know. I don't know if it makes any sense. I'm kind of rambling at this point, but. Anyways, all right, well, we got the uh, exhaust out. We got everything disconnected. The engine's about to pull out, so I will uh, probably get these motor mounts disconnected. I think there's just three of them one, two, and then there's another one way in the back down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but it's down there below the transmission. 
So I'll get those unbolted, get the hoist on this thing, and yank this drive line out. Stay tuned. All right, let's hook this hoist up and get this engine out. Let's hook the chain up to this side. Gonna go with an M8 on this side, but I think we can go a little bigger on the other side. Thread it in there. And then on this side we can go with. I like to keep these chains nice and short when you're lifting because sometimes the hoist runs out of height. Go right up there. May not be able to use that washer. Sometimes you want to flip the chain this way to get the bolt in the end of the chain. Like that. Get that on there. And get enough thread so it doesn't rip out of there. There we go. All right, make sure the bolt's not going to come out. Looks like we're good. Tighten the other side up too. I'll tighten that up a little more and then I'll start yanking. All right, the engine's out. We got the transmission out with the engine all in one unit. We got an empty engine bay here. So I think I might take out that cross member too. I don't think it's needed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and strip out all the wiring harness. I'm gonna get that taken out. I'll probably do that off camera um, as well as other random stuff like the engine mounts and that sort of thing. In here, I'm gonna probably, maybe off camera, probably pull this dashboard out. I'm gonna obviously pull the shifter out, probably the e-brake as well. Basically strip all the little stuff that's still left on the interior, um, maybe the door panels as well, and make our final decision as to engine. Should we go with, I don't think we can fit the show motor up here. I was doing some measurements and um, I would have to set the firewall back so far, we would have like a 10 inch gap from the Taurus dashboard to the front of the windshield so front engine is not an option which is probably good this thing's not going to be cool without a mid-engine so we got to stick something in the back do we go with the show motor obviously that's the uh what i wanted to do originally that's the idea um, this show has about 103,000 miles, runs good, but as you can maybe see down here, it's got a coolant leak. It's got the infamous water pump leak. Total pain, but I got to yank the engine out anyway, and so I'll do the timing chain. The water pump is actually located behind the uh, uh, timing chain, which is a nightmare if you have to do it in the car. But if we pull the engine out, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, the main issue I'm running in with the show drivetrain is the width. 
the width, I'm obviously going to use the suspension, the control arms, the struts, everything in the whole front end of the show and just transfer it to the back of the Festiva. The main issue is the width. Now, I want it wide bodied, but if you look at the tops where the struts are and you measure across, it's much wider than, the, than this uh, Festiva. We're talking strut mounts that are almost at the glass. So it's going to present me with some problems. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll wrap this video up here and let you guys decide for me one more time and just see. Because now it's uh, crunch time. I either got to yank that motor out and the transmission, get that thing sorted in over here. Or should we go with like a Hayabusa engine or maybe a leader bike engine, throw it in the back, get 200 horsepower stock maybe out of a Hayabusa tuned, maybe throw a turbo on it, get up to 300. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. I think the um, motorcycle engine makes a lot of sense. Um, oh, and I want to keep this on a budget. So this whole thing, I think we're going to try and do the build for under $5,000. So we got $400 into this uh, Festiva. I bought that Taurus show for $2,800 uh, running and driving, but it does need a water pump and it needs, I think the turbos are also needing to be rebuilt because the turbos, um, it's smoking a little bit on startup. Don't think it's a big deal. I don't think there's any internal engine issues, but I don't know. Stripping this thing apart will turn this into a six month project. Putting a motorcycle engine in the back, I could probably do in a couple months. Maybe two, three months, if we're lucky. Let me know what you think. Comment again, and this is it. Let me know. Rear engine show, rear engine, leader bike, or Hayabusa. Thanks. All right, we're gonna take this dashboard out. Take these, these top bolts. in the butt to get to but I guess it could be worse could be taking out the Taurus show dash right now which I'm sure will be a nightmare and we got one same thing over there on that one there's a, one in the middle and one there the number of bolts underneath that we've taken out quite a few so far call the wiring harness and we should be able to get this dash out in just a minute we had a couple hidden bolts on the side. Oh, it's almost ready. Here we go. Oh yeah, dash is out. So I'm gonna try to get this thing ready for paint. Part of the uh, job is to get all this, I took all the plastic trim off, and we have to take all this nasty adhesive off. I've done this different ways in the past. There's rubber wheels you can spin on a drill and get all this off. But what I like to do, which works really well, is a heat gun. And uh, you get a piece of hardwood and shave it into a point and then you can kind of get it up without destroying the paint. Although I'm going to sand this down. Let us know what color you think we should paint it. I'm thinking of redoing the white, maybe a satin white or a flat white. And there's going to be a bunch of carbon fiber, but I don't know. Could be good in like a gray or a silver. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. What color would you paint it? I got my wife working for me. So we're getting off all the adhesive. Oh, look at how good she's doing. Oh my God. Oh, she's hired. All right. Be careful on the nice paint, babe. Oh my God, she's doing great. Look at this. What do you think, babe? 
You're hired. I'm trying. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think we got a new bodywork professional in our in the midst. Here, let's see if this helps. Move your hands. Try that, see if that's better or worse. A little better? You're much faster at this than me. I just start getting really frustrated. Now try. She says she's patient, but you should have heard her earlier when the shower was clogged. Far from patient. What color should we paint it? British racing green. British? That's not a British car, man. <laughs> this is a, well, this is more of a Korean car. Look. Made in Korea. You know this thing's a Kia? Well, it's a, it's a Ford, it's a rebranded Kia. <sighs> She's giving up. Tapping out? Don't you love when window tint comes off in one piece? Look at this, look at this, look, look. Get out of here. Don't jinx it, don't jinx it. It's coming off in one piece, look at this. If you ever peel the window tint, you know how impossible this is. Usually you gotta scrape this stuff up in 10,000 pieces with a razor blade. No. Look at that. Get out of here. Oh my god, the window tint gods have smiled down from the heavens. Are you kidding me? What is this? Anyway, there's no tint. It's like clear plastic. Lord. All right. I got all the glass out. Look at that. Boom. Glass out. Boom. Glass out. I'm going to leave the front and back windows in. I don't think I'm going to do a show paint job on this thing. I think I'll probably do like maybe even a single stage white. Just make it look decent. I don't know how much body work I'm going to do. But uh, yeah, we'll start prepping it for paint. But we're going to cut the fenders first, I think, before we go to paint. Because yeah, we're going to need to do some pretty big slicing on these fenders and on the inside. I'm probably going to shave the gas door because the new fuel tank will probably be up front. Uh, so we'll shave the gas door. I'm thinking about some new taillights. Maybe um, something... I was thinking maybe fiberglass or carbon fiber bumper. But what if we shaved the tailgate and put in like... I don't know, something cool. like Maybe like an LED taillight across the back. Like something off a Lincoln model. Like in... I don't know, I'm just, I think it would be super cool to get rid of these 80s style taillights, shave it smooth, and maybe put a long panel taillight, some sort of LED off one of the Lincolns, you know, keep it forward, but uh, update it. Maybe the headlights too, do some sort of LED headlights. There's a lot of little dings and dents you can see. I don't know how much of the fender we're going to cut out. We're going to cut out quite a bit, so and uh, stay tuned for that. That'll probably be in the ne next episode, but... Right now, we got this thing stripped completely and uh, was able to put my wife to work, which is nice. But off camera, I got rid of everything on the interior, literally everything. So I'm going to power wash this thing out tomorrow and the engine bay as well. The only thing I left was the brake booster. I'm not sure yet what brakes we're going to use, but uh, I left the steering just so I can bring it in and out of the garage. But we're going to power wash this whole inside and get it nice and clean and see what we're working with. I'm gonna go ahead and get these fenders off so I can start cutting the wheel arches. I 
think that's the next level. Yeah, so the inner structure looks really good. Even where these wheels were turning, they didn't hit the inner structure here, so it should be really easy. We're gonna start cutting out a lot of this and reinforcing it, especially if we're gonna go with mid-engine. Probably use most of the front control arms, although they are not very strong. Look, we got a sway bar and a control arm. That's about all we got. We don't even have two mounting points on the lower control arm. I might have to take care of that. But uh, both inner structures look good. There wasn't any rubbing, any damage. Everything looks really straight. The fenders are a little damaged from the wheels, look like they either cut them or they just wore out, but uh, maybe have to replace these, I'm not sure yet. Uh, most likely we're gonna be cutting so much of this fender out that these might be okay. There's gonna be a lot trimmed off of these fenders. So yeah, stay tuned, that'll be the next one. I'll start taping those off, make taking some measurements and cutting these fenders as well as the rear quarter panels because those are going to get cut quite tremendously as we decide on the drivetrain. I did buy a possible drivetrain. Let me show you that now. As I measure more of this Taurus, I am concerned about the width, especially on the front suspension. It's really wide. We It almost is wider than the Festiva. This is definitely a wider car than the original Taurus show. So what I picked up in the back of my trusty old F-150 was a 2008 Gixxer 750. Uh, full M4 exhaust. I'll go around the other side. You can see that. A lot of cool carbon fiber work tuned and putting out, I think, over 150 horsepower. Um, it's got really nice full stainless M4 exhaust. Low miles, 12,000 miles on this thing. And I think this would make a tremendous drivetrain um, and much more doable. I can design a rear diff, maybe from a Miata or maybe from a Subaru, like an STI, limited slip with a chain drive and run that to the back. Now, I don't think we could call it a Shogun anymore, but I do think it's very doable. And as a motorcycle company, originally this could be something that if there was enough of a market for it, we could even possibly design this as a kit, Trans, you know, transferring a motorcycle drivetrain into a car, maybe make some sort of universal cage system, maybe a differential system, a chain drive link for the two. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. Anyways, nice Jixxer. I know it's got half the horsepower of the show engine, but we could always solve that with like a turbocharger or something along those lines if we wanted a little extra power. Plus, I really, 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 really want a manual transmission. I know it's the show's got the flappy paddles. There's really no manual gearboxes that'll work on that thing. And especially transversely mounted like it is. So, I don't know. I'm leaning towards the motorcycle drivetrain just to make it high revving, fun, and of course manual transmission. I know a lot of people will probably be disappointed in the comments, but whatever, it's my project. I can do what I want. So that's where we're at right now. Let's keep going. The other thing I forgot to mention, if we use this motorcycle drivetrain, I bought this motorcycle for $2,000, salvage title. All it had was a little bit of a bent subframe, but I think it's gonna be, um, it's, it's practically mint. We got a broken bolt down here, but it's not broken off in the engine. Or it's broken, but it's not all the way in. So I can pull, extract that bolt. Running and driving, I got it started. Sounds perfect, low miles. We can sell a lot of the parts off this, the front forks, even the frame, the M4 exhaust, if we go with a custom exhaust. And I think I can recoup most, if not all, of my $2,000 I spent on this in just leftover parts. And if you come back to the Festiva, 
I am listing today all of these parts here, like I mentioned. Airbox, fan, I mean, we got... The, this this stupid little uh, throttle body is worth like $75. So, not about the money, but more so showing like, look, I think we could build this car for almost free. If you take out the labor hours, starter, alternator, the intake manifold with the fuel injectors, all the stuff we're not using, the shifter, we got the... Um, the shifter assembly we have the distributor we got the, all these plastic panels this we got the uh, cluster we have this thing's worth like 75 dollars i think i can sell all these parts this heater control is worth like 60 or 70 bucks um even a festiva badge and all this stuff so what a cool idea i thought if we can sell off the parts we're not using same thing with the jixer and then uh Maybe we could build this car for free. Be a little extra time, you know, listing all this stuff on uh, online. But, oh my God, think about how cool that would be if we literally built this car for zero dollars or close to it as possible. I know it's probably not going to be possible, but may, let's say we get this done for a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars even. How cool would that be? I, I mean, for me, it makes total sense because I used to flip cars all the time. That was like what I did before I started Rika, and um, that was my main source of income. I would flip, you know, one or two cars every single month, and this would be a great way of kind of showing, look, we can do a custom build and make money on it, like, or break even. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. I think it would be a really cool thing to show, like, look, if you want to put the labor in, you can get the parts for free. $400 Festiva, make back $700 in parts. The Jixer, bought it for two grand, sell off the parts I'm not using, get back that two grand, maybe even more, maybe a little less. Oh my God, how cool is that? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in that, and I'm going to continue to get going on this car. All right, right back where we started the video, and uh, we got the Festiva all wrapped up. Uh, torn down and getting ready to start cutting and welding. How do you feel about the work you put in there today, babe? I think I did a great job. What about you, Rush? Yeah. Thumbs up? <laughs> right, until next time. <laughs>